The spring and summer of 2020 passes way too quickly. After fixing up the mast, adding nav lights, a radio antenna and wind gauge, I finish up in the cockpit by sanding and recorking the aft teak panels and hatch cover. I also found new shiny drums for the main winches. Finally, we go sailing. You see, in 2017 I got very ill, and I had little energy left to care for a boat. I'd almost decided to sell, but something made me hesitate. So, in 2020, I found my joy in sailing again for the first time in years. It really did feel like coming home. Looking back, I got a whole lot done in 2020. Fixing the teak deck taught me a lot, and while I would do some things differently if I do it again, on the whole, it's been a great success. The diesel heater has been amazing and I'll never sail without a good heat source again. Although I installed the oven and gas in 2018, this was our first time using it properly and it's worked great and we've all felt very safe. So when winter comes around, with Morella back on the hard, I look forward to 2021 with big plans for the future. Welcome back to One Small Ship. It's a beautiful spring day. Temperatures have been inching higher and winter's grip on the world is finally letting up. There's still little activity in the boatyard, most of the boats are still covered, but this weekend promises clear skies and warm air. The boating season is beginning. Me and Amelia have come down to start removing Morella's old head, which we're replacing this year. And while I get started on that, she sets to cleaning up the main cabin. Well, I need to take, take this down so that I can get to the Blackwater tank. And I need to get the wash basin out of this. These rails, are, I think we'll have to go as well. And then I'll get the old salt out, this piece here, uh, and just clean out everything until it's just basically an empty area. Empty. Yes, and then, yeah, and then uh, once that's done, we can start to mock up the new stuff. I'll, I'll cut things out of cardboard and try to fit them in here and see what fits where. So there are two major things we want to get done this year. Replacing the old head with a new electric one and putting in a swim platform on the transom. So we bought uh, an SPX Johnson Aqua T. And the big upside with this head is that it comes with an external pump. And I'll be able to put a solenoid on the intake valve 
to the head and we'll be able to just use pressurized water instead of pumping the water straight into the head when we're using it. And that way we can make the system even quieter and I can use the same pump for several different systems. On top of that, there are some minor things on the list like uh, sealing the cockpit hatches, replacing the latches for those hatches and replacing the rest of the through holes and seacocks because I only replaced the one here for the head discharge back in 2017. Uh, the rest of them are still original. So the new head will be mounted here and the sink will get moved up from where the old one was depending on how we can fit the holding tank which is going to go back there and then the hoses will enter the tank I think on the left side. There will be a swan neck coming up on this bulkhead and down into the seawater intake for the head and then the discharge from the head will exit from the bowl here and go into the holding tank. There will actually be an internal tube or an internal pipe in the tank which will go up to the top of the tank and deposit the discharge from the top so that there is no pressure or at least very little pressure. The only pressure will be from the material that is actually inside the hose. However there is the problem of where to mount that pump and here is where my, my fresh water pump is mounted. This is just below the bead berth on the starboard side and here are where my battery charges are and inside of the battery charges there's my, my fresh water pump. You can see the strainer there and the water from the fresh water tank coming up. Uh, I've got an expansion tank on the other side and then that goes off to the galley. Now what I could do is I could take the battery charges and I could move those to the other side of the V-berth uh, but I would need to of course reroute some of the electrics and stuff. So I looked for off-the-shelf tanks for a while, primarily plastic ones, but I finally had to settle on this stainless one because there's just not enough room for anything else. So as you can see this barely goes in here. Mainly it's these mounting taps that are in the way and also the inlets and outlets on the side. So if we can put those underneath then we might be able to fit this in. But it's uh, still going to be still going to be quite an adventure to make this fit in here. So this morning I had a guy come by and take a look at the tank and he's going to take it to his workplace where they can weld it and fix everything for me, move all the spouts and put in the internal pipe and everything. But before I do that, before I take the tank over to the welders, I'm going to have to mount it in place temporarily and figure out where we need to put the new spouts, um, where we need to put the mounting brackets because they need to move as well, probably going to put those on the underside. So what I need to do is I need to take the tank out of the boat and just cut off all the uh, existing mounting brackets, all the existing spouts and uh, then I can fit it in place and then we can figure out where all the new stuff goes. So now I just need to mark up the holding tank and take the tank over to them and uh, yeah that should be it. I should have it back in a week or two and uh, we should be able to mount that.
So I went and handed in the holding tank to the welder and it came back today and this is the result. And it's not the most perfect job, but I think it'll do. I'm going to pressure test it, going to make sure it works properly, no leaks or anything like that. So the idea is to mount it in the head and I'm going to mount it on these two brackets that I got welded in, one here and one on the other side. I'm going to use this shelf that the old holding tank was mounted to and I'm going to cut it along this line so that I can use it as a guide for the rest of the carpentry that's going to go in the head. I marked out roughly where the discharge hose is going to go and I'm going to drill a fairly oversized hole here so that I'm sure I can fit it in. This is the old piece of plywood that was there. It's full of gunk and dirt that's been there for 30 years probably, so I, I don't want to use this. Um, but it is good to use as a prototype. There we go. I'm just fastening this down temporarily while I'm fitting it. So, uh, so while I was trying to fit the holding tank, it kept banging into the through hole for the ventilation and so I'm going to have to cut a bit of it off. I hope I can keep it in the same spot because I really don't want to move the through hole. So I'm just going to try and cut off a bit of it with the Dremel and, uh, and we'll see if, I, if that helps. So after an hour or so of fighting with this thing and an ungodly amount of cursing, I finally got it in place. It's only temporary of course, but it's in there now and there's plenty of room for it. I left a couple of centimeters between the top of the tank and the deck. Uh, should be, should be enough. And then what I'm going to do next is figure out the exact dimensions of this piece, this shelf that's going to hold up the tank. And uh, then when I figure out where everything goes, I'm going to have to mount the pump. And that means sorting out the electrics, moving all the cables and everything. And we need to replace this uh, old deck fitting for the pump out. This spot is really good for access, but it's, <laughs> it's in the way and we won't be able to mount the sink properly with that sitting there. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to drill a hole in here behind the tank. Uh, it's going to be tricky, but it, it's going to work, I think. I hope. Otherwise, I guess whenever we need to replace that hose, we're going to have to to move the tank. It's, there's, there's no other way to do this. But first things first, what I need to do is I need to take out this plywood shelf and fabricate the real one from new fresh plywood. And then I also need to uh, fabricate these backing pieces so that they can manage uh, to hold up the full weight of the tank, which will be closer to 50 kilos when it's full. So I need to make sure that those are beefy. And once I've done that, I can start figuring out how the carpentry is going to look in here and order pieces for that. And uh, then we can kind of start to puzzle all of this together. As soon as I started working, my old drill driver decided to finally give up the ghost and with limited options I just went for the only thing I could find on short notice. Luckily this Ryobi turned out to be a real godsend. I'm very happy with it and I even ended up getting an extra battery and a 12 volt charger, so hopefully the series won't get retired anytime soon. That 
looks. Pretty damn centered. The holes need to line up with the hoses and so far it's looking like they are. Should be fine actually. And then we need to figure out where to put the sink and I need to just draw that in and center it. So if I bring the wash basin out to this corner, make sure that the space is just about enough here and here. Just do it carefully and then we can sand it out later hopefully. Yeah, 16, 17 millimeters. So if I make this 15 millimeters, then that should be enough. So like that. And we just make a number of dots approximating a circle that I can follow with the saw. Well, I'm really happy with this. Uh, it looks like this is going to work. We're really talking about millimeter precision here because my plan originally was to have the sink mounted permanently out in this position about here and having the head opening and closing. There is a slight chance because if we open up this lid, it's hitting here and if I make this if I make this curve come over here if I make this curve follow along here and then in like that there's a slight chance that I can make enough space here that will be able to keep this thing permanently mounted here because the problem you see is the faucet comes up seven seven centimeters so if we need to make this slidable then I'm either going to have to put the faucet here or I'm going to have to make some sort of contraption where the faucet will be will be able to fold it up and down or something like that and I really don't want to do that I I really would like a proper bathroom faucet with hot and cold and everything but you know we'll, we'll see where it goes but I like the way it looks with the sink here and uh, yeah with a little bit of furnishing and uh, a little mirror here and a locker door here and everything. It's gonna it's gonna look beautiful when it's done. Well, the head rebuild sort of opened up a can of worms, and you're going to see me almost turn the boat inside out in the coming episodes, so look forward to that. We're still here and there's more to come, so as always, thank you so much for watching. Fair winds.